Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I thought I would hop on here and do a quick video about how my no buy year is going so far. It's almost been two months into no buy. I have a list of rules that I've been following, so I'm not allowed to go out and buy clothes. Um, I'm not allowed to go out and buy any makeup unless I've already used that makeup up first and I need more. I can't buy crafts, that seems to be a problem for me. Mostly it was clothes though, that was the biggest issue and I did not expect that because like I said before, I wear like the same two outfits so it didn't make sense to me that I was spending around like $500 a month on clothes, I'm not even kidding you, like that's terrible. So here we are, almost two months into no buy and I just wanted to give you a bit of an update. So I feel like I, I feel different. Like, I feel different not buying things and not it kind of like imposing rules onto myself where I am not allowed to buy um, these certain categories of things. And it's completely changed my attitude towards going out and spending money. And it, it really does free up your mind from thinking about more things to buy. Like, I feel like I have more brain space and I just, I feel calmer. And I mean, that's what I'm trying to achieve. I'm just trying to feel better, especially... Um, especially with those emotions around money and impulse control. So I feel like my impulses have gotten better. On like a side note too, I am able to procrastinate less. Like it's so weird. Like I would put off so much of my work and cause I, I work, um, sort of like a nine to five, I guess. And then I also do a job on the side where I contract out for, for work, um, just kind of research work. And I'm actually like getting it done instead of procrastinating it until like the day before it needs to be done. So I've, I'm really proud of myself. And I think that's in part because I have really practiced using those impulse control muscles. So I am really happy. Another part of no buy that I wanted to talk about was my long-term goals. So part of my long-term goals involves just how do I want my life to look in the next 20 years, in the next 30 years, the next 40 years? I'm 31 right now and something about 30 it just hits you differently than your 20s and you just feel your mortality a little bit more not that 30s old in any sense of the word but I feel like when I turned 30 I was like all right we're not 20 anymore <laughs> and we need to think about the future not that I hadn't been thinking about the future but I feel like now I really have a better idea of what I want my life to look like so I want to pay off my mortgage early, so we're two and a half years into a mortgage, and I would love to have that sucker paid off in the next, like, 15 years. And it wasn't a huge mortgage to begin with. It was, like, 258000 when we bought the house, and I feel like that's a very doable thing to get that over with as soon as possible. And then you just have so much extra cash to play with for investing and traveling and whatever else you want to do. I also... Part of the goal of not buying more things was to have gratitude for what I already own, which I know is super cliche whenever you go into channels and you they're talking about no buy or low buy, it's like, I want to have more gratitude. Yeah, we all want to have more gratitude, but I truly believe this, that you can only really appreciate what you have when you stop trying to acquire more things because... It's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Do you appreciate your stuff first so that you realize you have so much? Or is it um, you stop buying things and then you really sit down and evaluate what you have? So I think it has really helped to... Oh my gosh, my camera is shaking. I'm sorry that the washing machine is going off right now. Um, so it's really, really helped to not buy more things. Um... So yeah, there's just like a couple of life goals and like, do I want to continue the family tradition of being anxious about money? Because on both sides of the family, there has been just a lot of anxiety about money, whether that's feeling like you don't have enough or you can't spend it. I just want to feel the abundance in my life that I already have because I have so much. I make a good wage. I am so lucky. My life is so good. I, I like... I, hate, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I have a really good life. And sometimes I just forget that. And I think we need to really just like sit down and appreciate what we have. So there's that. And I feel like finally at this point, two months after Christmas, like I feel like we finally caught up like to the point where like my partner was off work over Christmas. So we bring in less income over Christmas and we're, t we're totally fine with that. Like it's, it's fine. But 
you do feel it a little bit when your expenditure is more because of Christmas. So finally, after about two months, and uh, two months of not buying stuff, we are sort of at this great place of having an excess amount, not like an excess amount of money, I shouldn't say we're like rich, but like, you just feel, you feel that, you feel like you have extra money, which is a really good feeling. It's also dangerous though, because I've been here before where I feel like I have money and then I go spend it. So um, it's great to have these rules imposed upon myself that I can't spend that money, so. That's great. I feel like I have extra money and um, like I've mentioned in other videos too, we're, we're paying off the boiler we bought last year for our house. So that money just goes like straight to paying off the boiler. So that's like really great. Um, and I've been staying out of stores, which has been helpful too, which I know sounds like an obvious thing, but I think it's hard too though when you're, both of you are working full time, you have a house together, you have a dog. I end up having to go to the store for groceries because I said I, I said at the beginning of this I was like I need to stay out of grocery stores I need to stay out of all stores but like how do you do that when you also have to contribute to your household like I can't send Sorrel for groceries like every week I have to help too so but it's been good to stay out of like clothing stores and drug stores and like stores of that nature so um, and lastly, I have made a list of things that I want to buy after my no buy is done. And interestingly enough, they're, they're mostly books. Like I want to buy these books. And one of them is the thousand dollar project by Canna Campbell. I have been coveting that book for like two years now. And I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger on buying it, but I really like her concept of saving in thousand dollar pockets. And it's sort of breaking down a goal into like thousand dollar chunks and I, I I am the type of person like I need to have a unit like a metric to kind of follow so like we can save a thousand dollars at a time instead of looking at like I need that fifty thousand dollar thing like whether that's like a house reno or or just like anything it's just easier to look at in thousand dollar pockets so Anyways, that's what I think the concept of the book is about. I need to buy the book to actually like understand what she's talking about. But, um, so that book, I really want that. Um, and then, you know what? I can't even remember what the other thing on the list was. Like, and that's a good example too of when you want something, you put it down on a list, you look at it later and you're like, I actually didn't really want that thing or you can't really remember why you wanted it. So I'm starting to keep a list of things like, that I would have normally just gone out and bought and instead just listing them and maybe in a couple of months or a year I'm not gonna want them so it's a good practice in seeing if that desire is still there to get that thing I've also not that I've changed my no buy rules a bit and I guess it's more like a low buy year because I still am buying things and I I feel like conflicted about that I feel conflicted that I'm doing like a no buy year but I'm still buying things so part of it is, like for example, I really wanted this textbook for my research work. And I've been wanting it for a while, so I'm like, and I looked on Amazon, and for some reason I thought it was like 100 or $150, but I looked, it was 50 bucks. I'm like, okay, that's reasonable. So I started saving up for it. I started doing a cash envelope for that one. And I think my rule, I'm gonna sort of twist my rules a little bit, where, if there's something that I want, and it's it's reasonable, like it's reasonable to want a $50 book to help you with your work, that if I save up for it in a reasonable way, then I feel like I sh should be able to buy it. But, so I don't know if I should start renaming my no buy year as a low buy year. And in my last couple of videos, I mentioned that I bought my AirPods because I did fully fund that um, cash envelope and I bought them and it is so much more satisfying to buy something after you've saved up for it obviously but um, as somebody who used to impulsively just buy things this is really rewiring my brain in a great way to learn how to buy something in a healthy way so I am not I'm not going to change my rules necessarily but if there is something that I reasonably want and need I'm going to save up for it and I'm gonna buy it and I'll just like I'll reevaluate as I go along but I know this can also be a slippery slope down into spending so I'll keep hold of myself and I will I'll just keep reevaluating 
Um, and that's all we can do, right? So anyways, bit of a rambly, chatty uh, update on my no buy year. If you have any questions about it, comment in the links below or comment down below. And uh, I will see you in my next video.